Good morning all, it's the Devious Monkey here. It's Bagel Sunday, so guess where I'm going. Couple of things right off the bat. Number one, yesterday I actually forgot to say, greetings all, it's the Devious Monkey. It's because I was freezing my ass off and it just threw me for a loop. I watched a ton of videos last night on various lenses and setups and you know, just in general seeing what people were doing. One video in particular, it was a very, effective moving video. He has been doing this for, I guess, like five years now. And, he, and the, the point of the story wasn't to do an unboxing. It wasn't to, to, you know, talk about gear so much as it was to tell the story of how he got to that point from five years ago and why it meant so much for him to have the lens that he was showing. And that was the Sony 16-35 2.8 G Master. Now, I have contemplated that lens back and forth since I started shooting with Sony gear. You know, back when I was shooting the Canon gear, there was the, you know, the Holy Trinity, which was the 16-35, to the 24-70, to and the 70-200. to Now, I had the 24 to 70 and the 70 to 200 and just never got the 16 to 35. Well, now I did like my 16 to 35 F4, but the fact that it's an F4 and that it doesn't work with the focus breathing compensation on this A7 IV has pretty much, yeah, I'm not gonna use it. So again, I use this 20 millimeter pretty much all the time. It would be nice to have some more reach for sure. And I think that the 16 to 35 has a valuable part of my flow. After contemplating it, after watching all these videos, after playing with this camera for a while, I have now made the decision, the realistic decision, that I'm gonna get the 16 to 35 2.8 G Master, and that will pretty much other than when I want to go lighter and I use this 20 millimeter, but it will pretty much be the lens that I use for my filming. In order for me to justify getting that lens though, I'm going to be realistic and say that, all right, I know I'm getting rid of the two ZV-1s. I know I'm getting rid of the 16 to 35 F4. I know I'm getting rid of the 85. It is now going to go even further in my purge. I'm going to sell my A7C and I'm going to sell my 24 to 70 because when it gets right down to it, now that, that I've been doing this, now that I've had the A7R4 for as long as I have, and seeing what I'm doing with it, what I'm not doing with it, what I thought I was gonna do with it, and, and I'm not doing, and what I'd like to do going forward, I'm basically either birding wildlife, in which case the A7R4 with the 200 to 600, or, or, and, I'm filming. Now that I have this amazing A7 IV, which is hands down, like awesome, best filming camera I've ever had. Now that I have that and I have my active stabilization and I have my focus breathing compensation, I see the 16 to 35 being this, the next perfect lens other than this 20, because it will give me a little bit more in the frame, you know, from the 16 to 20, a lot more. And it will also then give me the ability to have some reach, which which can come in handy because sometimes the 20, it's like, you know, I'm always saying, well, you can see here. Well, actually, you can't see it because it's just too far away and I'm, I can't zoom in at all. So things like that, I have found that, that I, unfortunately, that 16 to 35 F4 just ain't quite cutting the mustard, although the focal range was great. That being said, everything goes. The only lenses that I'm going to keep are the 200 to 600, the Sigma 105 F1.4, the 20 millimeter, and then the new 16 to 35. All other cameras go except for this A7 IV and my A7 R4 because I just don't need to have any more than that. I, I would love to keep the A7C and say that, that I would use it, but the fact of the matter is I won't because I'm always gonna have this camera in my hand. I'm also always just gonna use the A7 R4 when it comes to stills. I thought to myself, well, I paid for it. I might as well just keep it. But then I thought to myself, well, why don't I just sell it and you know use the money and pay for all the other shit too. That's what I'm gonna do. So exciting things are, are coming anyways. I believe my bagels should be ready, so let's get some bagels. All right, kids, I am trying to tweak this setup a little bit. All the ideas that I've had just aren't working out, and it's really because I just don't have the right tools. I have a number of parts and pieces. I've got all kinds of like metal attachment points, little angle things, the smaller ones again. And I think when it gets right down to it, I can't top 
what I already did, with the exception of one thing. Rather than putting it on this high ball head, that, that I mean, look at how many inches that's going to make it stick up, compared to having it on a flat Arca clamp that's right down on the plate. It also sits lower, doesn't have as much wobble to it, technically. I jutted it forward a little bit, but I also, it, like, obviously because... Obviously, because I don't have it on a ball head, I can't I can't spin it and move it how I want to. But there's two things that are happening here. One, it moves enough because, as you can see, I sort of tilted it over my way a little bit, so you get a little bit more of the window on that side of the headrest and less. So if somebody were sitting here, you wouldn't quite get them in. But then all I have to do is very minor twist. Just a wee little bitty twist like that. And now it centers the, you know, it centers the vehicle again. Number two, right now it is on active stabilization. It is a field of view with the 20 millimeter F1.8, but I have ordered the 16 to 35. 2.8 G Master. That should be here. It already showed me it shipped today. I don't know if that means I'm going to get it tomorrow, more than likely Tuesday. You know, now I get an additional four millimeters back. And you know, I think that's much, but it's huge. So if I put it at 16 millimeters, I'll probably, I probably won't be able to put it at 16 millimeters actually, because it'll get the windows. Like that's how, how much further out it'll go. And it might, you know, have that blowout, which is what I wanted to eliminate. It doesn't block as much of the windshield, probably only about half of what it was blocking before. And, you know, we're good to go. All right, I just wanted to show you what I did. So here's the, the original plate that is, again, still Velcroed back here. And I shifted this back because I had a little bit too far forward. And then that little bracket under here, like it was basically it was sticking out probably another couple of inches. And that was a little bit too much. So, I mean, there's still some play here but I don't think it's as bad because once I get the camera on there, most of the weight then sinks down and I think I'm okay. Uh, I had to play around with the placement a bit, but what I did was I added about two two inch pieces on the sides right in front of where I had it before on the back. And I'll show you that in a second, but this is me jiggling the camera. Can you see it? I mean, you can see my arm moving, but before it was, it was definitely going like that and it's not doing that now. All right, so I've got this moved back just a tad. So now when I, this is pushing down, it's catching on the front Velcro there, so it's not gonna pop up. But I mean, look at how that, that isn't moving. And before it was very, very noticeable that it was moving. So I'm very happy with how that came out because now it's on there solid. It's not going anywhere. All right, let's go inside and do laundry and other awful shit. Okay, what a busy day. I mean, do I say that every time? It seems like every day is pretty busy. It's going to be few and far between as far as having time to shoot and post a video. They're going to have to be almost short because I'm going to have the new hire here and I'm going to be training. So that's going to take up all my time. And I'm again, I'm not going to be filming my day job work whilst I'm doing day job work, especially when I've got a new hire with me. At some point, I'm going to have to sit down. I know I said that I was going to do this this weekend, but you know how shit works. It just goes off in different directions. I am going to have to get together a list and probably get on KEH's site and see what they're going to give me for all this gear. In the meantime, if you want a ZV-1, I have two of them. They're both in perfect condition. Both of them have small rig cages. The box, the cable, a battery, like an OEM battery, good to go there. If you want a Sony 16 to 35 F4, I'm gonna have that for sale. If you want a Sigma 85 1.4, gonna have that for sale. If you want a Sigma 24 to 70 F2.8, gonna have that for sale. If you want a Sony 40 millimeter 2.5, the little lens, gonna have that for sale. And if you want the Sony 28 to 70 kit lens that came with this A7 IV, gonna have that for sale. That, that's never even been mounted on the camera. It's literally, I pulled it out of the box and I put it in the humidifier cabinet. So it's in perfect working condition. That's it. That's all that's gonna be going. Oh, <laughs> I forgot. And if you want a Sony a7C that comes with two different small rig cages, one that 
that was like their first one that doesn't have the silicone handle, and then the second much better one that has the silicone handle. That's for sale too. If you're legitimately interested in any of that gear, send me a comment, a message, whatever, and we can talk about it. No lowballing, no shipping outside of the Continental Lower 48. No dicking around with me because the monkey don't play. So that's all I've got for you today. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, leave them down below. As always, thanks for joining me. Be sure to like and subscribe. And remember kids, forward and up.